one month ago. This Ryan Garcia thing is a load of horse crap and it's low hanging marketing. They literally have been trying to make it seem like I'm mentally ill, mentally ill when I'm speaking on things which endanger children. Children, babies that are innocent, babies. I, I swear, I feel like I'm in the movie, don't look up. I have PBD helping me in this camp and many other warriors. This is not an act and I don't know what it is. No, the path you're going down is dangerous, my friend. I don't give up. You really thought I was crazy? Y'all was tripping, mm. not me. Mm. You got it, tripping. Mm. I think if I ever had a time that was appropriate to say I told you so in my life, that time will be right now. My cameraman Chance, Ajay's there. Um, hey, we have it pre-recorded months ago. What did I say it was gonna happen? I said, I'm about to make sure everybody thinks I'm gonna go crazy, <laughs> I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Why, wow, it's gonna be the call The Great Escape. Like, I have it all documented. I was already planning it, uh, you know, weeks and weeks and months behind. Uh, I don't know what made me come up with the idea, honestly. I just, uh, one day just decided just to go all in and just, commit to a plan that I had and I was not going to budge for nobody. I didn't matter if I went on his podcast, anybody's podcast. I was acting like sporadic, like just like crazy. I would go on Your man like, spaces, you were just like spaces. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I would do this with my nose. Like, no, I saw never, like, it's just a tick. I had everything like I just like, but then you make adjustments to what was real though is um, at times I did drink a little bit during camp because uh, I like to drink. MMA flicks and chill. If you like, comment, subscribe, like, be part of the community, the MMA Flicks and Chill community. And we do things a little different here. I like to uh, insert humor and give you a visual experience, an audio experience. Although a couple weeks ago, I put out a video on Mike Tyson and everyone started complaining that the music was too loud. So I will be careful with that. But part of MMA Flicks and Chill is audio and visual and stimulating thought surrounding combat sports. I think that's pretty cool. So why don't you subscribe if you think it's cool too? Good. Oh, wait. Yes, you subscribed. Now let's go with the I told you so. All right. So the reason I call this low hanging fruit marketing is because he's using serious subjects to garner attention for money. So he's using being a Christian and saying in the Jesus name and stuff like that, but then comes out and says, I was just acting. Is that a good look? You know what I mean? And then he's talking about all he wants to do is help the kids. And this is where it's a little darker even because he's using a serious subject that is on people's minds as is on society's mind right now a lot and says i'm just trying to help the kids and then comes out and says it was all a hoax i was just acting to get attention and, and make money promote the fight the problem is divides people first off like because people want to believe that he is doing something good so even on my channel like i had a bunch of people saying he's just praising jesus but I knew he wasn't. I knew that he was just doing it for a fight promotion. I don't know what his personal beliefs are. Maybe he is. But that's not really what he was using it for. He wasn't really trying to get the, you know, preach the word of God or anything like that. He was using that. That's actually, there's um, a scripture in the Bible that talks about how the, the merchants in the temple were selling lame animals to sac sacrifice to his father. And he starts knocking tables and stuff over because they were using God's name to financially benefit. And it infuriated Jesus. So actually, if Ryan Garcia did that in front of Jesus, I don't think that Jesus would appreciate that that much. I think Jesus might be knocking some tables over, might upset him. And so it causes a lot of confusion among people and, and the fans, and it betrays people's trust. I think this was a bad move on his part because now he's the boy who cried wolf. 
and nobody's going to believe him anymore. When he's acting crazy, which he, he might be a little crazy, but when he's acting crazy, people are just going to be like, yeah, he's just acting just like last time, and I'm not going to fall for it this time. You know, that's what most people are going to think. There will still be some gullible ones that will be like, oh, you know, but you know how it is. So it's low-hanging fruit marketing. He is using God, religion, and very serious issues to just give himself money. Here's the crazy part. We don't know what he does with his money, right? But he's not coming out and saying we're donating money to help go towards stopping trafficking and the harm of children and stuff like that, like supporting organizations that are actually working on fixing the problem. He's not coming out and saying that or anything. All we have to go off of is he used it to make himself money. And that's the weird, dark part of this. Um, I had people on one of my shorts where he's just repeating Jesus. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Over and over and over again. And I said, this is odd behavior of him doing this. And I was just trying to point out all the obvious things that I saw that he was using to make money. And I thought people were smart enough to get it. But I got comments of people thinking that, like, I didn't like him praising Jesus or something like that's completely taken out of context to what I was intellectually trying to communicate with people. So I guess I got to start over explaining in my videos so everybody understands. Also, I'll tell you conspiracy theory that is lingering in the back, in the back of my mind as well about this whole situation. I do want to say that I think that it's a really dark, weird, inappropriate thing to uh, use God, religion, and people's trust to financially benefit when you're lying, you know, being deceitful. That's what he's doing. I don't know. It's just, it feels gross. It's not a good look. It's just my opinion. All right. So here's the conspiracy theory. You ready for this? What if, and I'm not saying this is, this is just a conspiracy theory. So put on your foil hat put on my foil hat, my invisible foil hat. What if he really is crazy? And what if all that was real? But then there's like sponsors and people not wanting to get behind him because they don't know if they can rely on him or trust him. Like, is he in his right state of mind? From what we're seeing, the answer is no. Right? So maybe there was like sponsors and money stuff happening in the background and people that are managing Ryan and his money are like, hey, that was a bad look, what you just did. We're going to go ahead and set you up. They go to the PR team and they're like, what can we do to fix this? And the PR team steps in and says, look, we got to make it all look like it was just for promotion. And he's in the right sound of mind. So then they set him up with an interview with, you know, Patrick Bet David, smooth things out. Oh, it was all just for show. I'm a genius. You know, and then Patrick Beck, David's like, oh, you're a genius. And this person's like, oh, he's a genius. Is he a genius or is he just deceitful, like a fake guru? You know, like they're just promising you hope, but they're not actually giving. You're just giving them all your money and you're not pulling any value from it. You know, that piece of promotion that he did where he had the king hat on and he's sitting in a chair in front of a window. He says... He's working with PBD, Patrick, but David, who is a strategist. I mentioned this actually before it all came out a month ago in my other video. If you scroll through my videos and you see a video that says this Ryan Garcia thing is a bunch of horse crap, I break down everything that they were doing and it's exactly right. They admitted everything down to the T of what I said that they were doing. And I mentioned this in this video that he probably had, he was hanging with higher echelon people in the business world. And these people know how to manipulate people. But another downside to this that I see is you have to lower your morals and your standards a little bit to make that conscious decision. People that are prone to be corrupted easily will see this 
and use it as an example and then start doing it themselves. So now we're going to have AI tricking us with audio and visual. And now we're going to have actual real humans tricking us on a more massive level. And I just think it's going to get out of hand. It's already seeming to get a little out of hand. And this is pretty much the Wild West. You know, Cat Williams said in that interview, if it looks like it's set up, if it seems like it's set up, it is. Things that you're seeing on the news, uh, announcements you're seeing made by big corporations, things like that. If it looks like a setup, it is. It's crazy to really realize the reality we live in. Very little authentic things happening around us anymore. So I guess that's probably why we like MMA is because when they get in the cage, you can't fake it, right? Well, you can, but they're not. There's a certain amount of authenticity that's going to be involved when your job is to knock somebody out or choke them out and their job is to do the same to you. So we like that. And it's a little bit of authenticity that we still get to hang on to in today's society, in today's culture. I think it's interesting how all around the globe we're starting to mix too, you know? It wasn't 10, 20 years ago, you know, we had to make long distance calls to other states. We didn't have internet. We didn't have, I'm not talking about 10 years ago. I'm talking more like 20 years ago now. We didn't have internet and stuff like that. And now we've advanced to the point to where in our daily lives, we can interact with people on every continent of the globe. We're learning how things are. It's starting to dawn on us as a human civilization all around the globe. That's going to have some impact on our belief system, on things that we believe, which open-minded people should just, in my opinion, look at people for how they treat others. And if you do business with them, how are they treating you? Are they looking out for you? If they're not looking out for you and you're looking out for them, you're doing business with the wrong people. It's as simple as that. Same with your friendships, your relationships. If you're looking out for somebody and you have good intention and you want what's best for them and you care about them and you can tell that they're not reciprocating that, they're not part of your tribe. Cut them off. Stand back as far as you can. You want to surround yourself with people and it doesn't matter what kind of people just people are people their character their spirit is what we want to connect to and if someone has an ugly an ugly spirit we don't want to be around that and this whole deceptive way of marketing with what the subjects he chose specifically feel ugly. Like it feels like it was done with ugly spirits involved, doesn't it? But yeah, that's my explanation of my last video. I was the only YouTube space MMA commentator that saw through it. Maybe because I am a marketer and a promoter and I know how it works. But the way they did it was icky. It's like the equivalent of if you saw a homeless person sleeping on a bench in a park and you were walking by and you have money and you saw some cash kind of falling out of his pocket. You saw like a 20 and a 10 and you kind of just reached over and took it and then walked away. Morally, it felt very similar to that to me. Just my opinion. Um, just observing what I see. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA flex and chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe.